Hey, what's going on guys, it's Kyle Watts. So if you click this video, you're probably looking to replace the internal mic on your brand new Sony ZV-E1 with something like an external shotgun microphone. So in today's video, we're gonna go over several different options that I think are the best external shotgun microphones for this camera. Uh, we'll start at kind of the lower price points and we'll work our way up to the more expensive microphones. So throughout this video, we'll hear how each microphone sounds, kind of the pros and cons to each one of them. So at the end of the video, I'll tell you which microphone is kind of my personal favorite for this camera. So anyways, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the onboard microphone from the Sony ZV-E1. This microphone has been improved from previous models. It's going to have your forward-facing microphone, a rear-facing microphone, and an auto setting, which is going to kind of sense if it has a face in the picture, it's going to switch to the front. If it doesn't, it'll switch to the rear. Uh, so that's kind of a cool mode if you are vlogging. The one thing with this microphone is it's it sounds better than the old previous ones, but it's still not that great in my opinion. I think personally, I like having things like external shotgun microphones that are gonna sound even better. Let's face it, half your video's quality does come from the audio, sometimes even more so from the audio than the visuals. Let's check out this microphone real quick, walk around and just kind of see how good it actually sounds while kind of vlogging, walking around. Uh, so we're gonna walk and uh, talking to the mic, talking to the mic. And this is just kind of how this microphone sounds. It does have a windscreen on top, so it is going to cut some of that wind noise. Uh, but otherwise, this is kind of just what the microphone sounds like. It's gonna sound best if you're really close to it like this versus like being far away. Like if you are far away, it's gonna start introducing a bunch of background noise uh, and that's not really great. Microphones like shotgun microphones are gonna be much more directional and kind of intentional on what they're picking up. So, so let's check out some of the shotgun microphones that I think are a really good option for this camera, starting with kind of maybe some of the least expensive microphones and moving up to like the most expensive microphones. Uh, and then at the end of the video, I'll kind of tell you which one I think I recommend the most for this camera. So the first option that we're going to take a look at is the Rode Video Micro. Uh, more specifically, the one we're using is actually the second version of the Rode Video Micro. This microphone is like $79. It's a little bit more money than the version one. Uh, if you want to look at the version one, that's also an incredibly good microphone. The real big difference between this one and the old one is the shock mount system got a lot smaller and it's definitely more compact. Uh, this microphone does still come with the windscreen, so if you're outdoors, you have the little fuzzy windscreen that you can put on that's going to kill out all the wind noise. Otherwise, it does come with that small foam cover. Uh, this is a really good option because this microphone, you plug it in, and that's it. That's all you have to worry about. You plug it in, and it works. Uh, this is a very popular mic because it's a very cheap mic, and it does sound really good. There are better options that require batteries and stuff, and we'll get to those more, but this is just kind of how this microphone sounds. Uh, and I like the fact that I don't have to worry about batteries. I don't have to worry about charging it. Uh, it's literally plug and play. Other than that, it doesn't have any other bells and whistles. So uh, let's just kind of quick walk around and just see if this thing has any handling noise, any wind noise. I don't think it's going to. The shock mount system on this is quite good. Um, but this is going to be this microphone. Uh, in the past, when I've done tests on this microphone, I've noticed that there's been like zero wind noise, even when riding on like a boosted skateboard. So I think this is going to be a good option if you guys just want a better sounding microphone that's really compact and really not just like a big microphone setup on the camera. So, because let's face it, if you have the ZV-E1, you probably bought this because it's a smaller compact camera. So you probably want the smallest microphone you can get for the camera. So let's look at the next microphone, which I think is gonna be also a really good option. It's actually really only like $20 more, and there's a few more bells and whistles with that one. So let's check that out. All right, so now you're listening to the Rode Video Go 2. This microphone is $20 more. It's a $99 microphone. The thing with this microphone is it's just a slightly bit bigger than the Rode Video Micro, but this one has a few more options that that one doesn't have. First off, I think this microphone is gonna sound just a little bit better, uh, but the mount that this one sits on is actually still the Rycote shock mount, but it has the adjustable forward or back, so you can actually move the microphone around uh, on top. So if you have a pancake lens, you can pull that back and maybe get it out of the frame if it's in the frame. The other big thing that this has is it actually has a USB plug on the top. So you can use this microphone as a USB microphone with your computer. So whether you're doing like live streams or things like that on your computer, you can plug it in and actually open the Rode software to control like all the bells and whistles and high pass filter and boosts and things like that, uh, which is only available when you're plugged into the computer. It doesn't save to the mic, but that makes this microphone for 20 bucks more seem way more versatile having that like additional options to have a USB microphone. Because let's face it, if you wanna buy that separate, 
that's another hundred dollars usually on top of what you would already own so this microphone comes with the foam cover if you do want to get the windscreen for it the dead cat that is an additional price that's like 20 to 29 dollars something like that you would have to buy that and i believe that is the ws 12 it's either 12 or the 11 i can forget the two we'll put the i'll put it down here what it is uh, so if you like the way this microphone sounds this one's 100 dollars. it's a great mic so let's just kind of walk around and see if this one has any handling noise uh, i don't think it's going to as well this one has a dual shock mount on it so it's going to be good this is a very popular mic the last year a lot of people have picked this up because it's good and it doesn't need battery charging it's still plug and play and it works great so if you're looking at a microphone and this is fits your budget, this is a very good pick. I would go with this one. So let's check out the next microphone, which is going to be actually in the same price point. It has a little bit more bells and whistles than this one. So let's check this one out. All right, so this next microphone we're going to check out is the DD V-Mic D4. This microphone just recently came out. This one is kind of similar to the VideoMic NTG, where it has a volume dial on the back. Uh, which is really good to be able to like dial in the sound that you want technically speaking usually when the more volume you put on the microphone the less you put on your preamps of the camera you're going to get a better sound because the microphone probably has a better sound than the preamps of the camera for me right now i'm actually running five on the microphone and four on the camera so that's the settings we're at this microphone does come with a foam cover and it has an additional windscreen that actually fits over the foam cover itself this thing also does have the adjustable hot shoe mount where you can move it forward or back it does come with the cables as well and i think it does came with a cable that allows you to plug into a cell phone as well the other thing with this microphone though is it does have a bigger stature it is a longer mic so if you do have really short pancake lenses this thing potentially could like show up in your frame so that's one reason you would pull it back so one of the things with this microphone is it is battery powered but it is not a rechargeable battery this thing actually just uses one triple a battery which can be a pro and it can be a con the pro is that if you run out of the batteries, you can easily replace it. You don't have to worry about waiting to charge. The downside is that you have to buy batteries when it dies, or at least use like rechargeable batteries. So for me, I personally kind of like just plugging my microphone in every now and then, because those usually have like 20 hour life. Um, but if you are on the go and you need to replace a battery quick, you can literally just pop into a store and buy a AAA or have one in your backpack as a spare. So that's actually a really good option as well. The one thing I will say though, is that it's sometimes hard to tell when the battery is dead, uh, other than the fact that maybe your microphone's not putting out the same amount of juice or volume that it would if it was good. So that is one thing on those other microphones where if the battery's dead, it's not gonna light up the microphone and you're gonna know that right away. So anyways, let's check out walking around with the DDD4. This microphone is going to have a similar shock mount to the Rode. So I don't think you're gonna hear any handling noises. I think it's gonna do wind really well. In fact, on the back of the microphone, they do have kind of a big foam donut that it doesn't allow like wind to come through. So that's gonna help, I think, capture some of that wind sound from getting into the mic capsule. So let's check out the next microphone, which I think is very similar to this one. Uh, this one does step up quite a bit in price though. Okay, so this next microphone has actually been one of my favorite microphones for the last like three years because that's when I bought this. This is the Rode VideoMic NTG. What I really like about this microphone is it's very controllable. It has a lot of bells and whistles. It has a high pass filter. It has a boost. It has a cut. Uh, it has the volume down on the back so you can change the gain. It even has a safety track if you want to record that. So if you do get peaking levels, you can switch to the safety track to try to like compensate that. Uh, this microphone just sounds really good. It has good low end, it has good mid range, and it does have that good 8K to 12K range. Um, the cool thing with this thing too is that you can use this as well as a USB mic because it does have the USB connection. So you can plug that in your computer, you can use it for live streams, things like that. And this is a really good microphone for that. So this microphone does have a few similarities to the Rode Pro Plus, only it doesn't have quite as defined as of a low end and it isn't a huge microphone like that microphone. And that's why I'm not going to recommend the Rode Pro Plus for this camera because that microphone is just too big. I feel like it's outdated and we're waiting for a new version of that. Now the Rode Video NTG is also not quite a small mic, it is a little bit bigger, but it does also have that sliding hot shoe mount. So the microphone only does come with the foam cover and you can purchase the WS11 Dead Cat separately, which is like another $30. Uh, this microphone does start at $249, um, but I do not regret ever paying that amount of money for this microphone because this thing's been my workhorse for quite a long time. But let's just see how the handling noise is on this. Once again, this has that dual Rycoat shock mount very similar to the last couple microphones. And this thing does very well at wind reduction. Uh, I've done a couple of videos before with this microphone on like a boosted skateboard, and it didn't have any wind sound coming in from behind or in front. Uh, I would say this is going to be the microphone that I would bring when I know I'm gonna be in like windy environments. So if you guys wanna check out this microphone, it's $249. Once again, link in the description for all these microphones. But let's check out the other two new microphones that I also have been really 
highly recommending recently. So before we switch over to the mics, I just want to quick show the other mics that we're going to show. And that's these like Sony digital hot shoe mounts. These microphones are a little bit more expensive, but they are really cool and they are really convenient for people who are like content creators. So for the last few months, I've actually been using the ECM B1M. This microphone, you literally plug it to your hot shoe. There's an auto setting, so you can literally slip it to auto and then you don't have to ever set your audio levels because this thing is going to kind of compress and max out at a certain like level and you don't have to, have to like look at it. Uh, it does have like a forward facing mic. It does have a slightly wider version of that mic. And then it also has like a 360 degree omnidirectional mic. So you can be behind the camera, you could be in front of the camera, it's gonna pick up audio. Uh, it's gonna bring in some noise if you have the omnidirection because it will pick up 360. But it also does have those like noise cancellation settings and low cut filters. Uh, these are really convenient because you don't need wires. You don't have to really think about what you're doing. You plug it in and they sound good. And then in a sec after we show this one, we'll check out the brand new Sony mic, shotgun mic, which has like eight different settings. And this is like super controllable on what you want to shoot. So let's check out the way this thing sounds first. All right, so now we are on the Sony ECM B1M. This microphone is going to be an absolute perfect pairing for this camera because it does have that digital hot shoe. And like I said before, you plug it in and that's it. You don't, you turn it to auto. You don't have to really worry about anything. And if you do decide to switch the camera to facing the front and want to speak to it, you can quick just switch that dial to Omni and it still sounds really good, especially when you're close to the camera. I have been using this microphone for my talking head videos in my studio recently. The one thing with that is that when you do get a few feet away from it, it will start to introduce a little bit more noise from the room. So in that case, I have been putting on the noise cancellation to kind of isolate any reverb or like my air conditioning fan coming on, stuff like that. So if you want to look at this microphone, you can still use this for studio. The only downside is, is that it does not plug into anything else other than the digital hot shoe. So if you're trying to plug it into a cage, it would have to be on the actual camera itself. There is like a, an extension that Sony does have for like the K3M setup that you can buy individually that will give you like eight inches away. So you could mount it somewhere else, but it does have to be on the digital hot shoe. But let's just see what the handling noise on this microphone is and the rejection. Like I said before, this wing is a shock mounted microphone as well. Uh, if you're running with this thing, it can tip in enough to where it might hit the bottom and you could hear that interference noise. But I do think this is a really good option if you're on the go, you wanna just pop your camera out of the bag, put the microphone on there and you're, you're good to go, it's done. You can put on that noise cancellation if you do wanna isolate that a little better to what's just in front of the camera. So the next microphone is the brand new Sony shotgun microphone. This one just came out. This thing is really cool. Like, I've had this microphone for the last month testing with Sony. What really sets this one apart is it has eight different mode dials on the back. So the first setting is the ultra directional, which is going to be very pinpointed right dead center of the camera. It's going to remove a lot of the background sounds and ambient noises, and it's gonna be very directional. So that's gonna be very good for like vlogging and being right in front of the camera. The next setting is the super directional, which is gonna be like if you're vlogging, maybe with a couple people, you want a little bit wider of that band. This is gonna be kind of like your main setting as well. Um, and then you have the unidirection, which is gonna open it up to be a little bit more of the like 130, 180 degree angles. Uh, the next setting is the omnidirection, just like the last microphone where it's 360 degrees around the camera. But now what really sets this one apart is this has the rear direction microphone. So you can be behind the camera and it's going to isolate everything else around the sides and the front. And it does a really good job of that. Uh, and then the next setting below that is a, even cooler. It's a front mic and a rear mic at the same time. So it's gonna eliminate all your sides and it's gonna really hone in on that front and rear microphone. Uh, only in this setting, it's going to bake that into a mono. So you wanna make sure the volume levels from the person behind the camera and in front of the camera are gonna be similar. Otherwise you're gonna be in a bad spot trying to edit that. And that's where the next setting comes in. You have a front and rear mic, but it's in left and right stereo so that in post you could split those and EQ them, volumes, change the settings to make them sound the way you want to. And then you can put them back into mono and mix it back in. Uh, and then also this microphone has a stereo setting, which is very different than any of the other Sony mics. So if you're recording like cars whizzing by, trains, or music, a concert, things like that, you're gonna get that true stereo sound, which is really cool to have on a microphone. Um, it's something that I don't use a lot, but I think when you do need it, it's really nice that you have it. So, so these last two microphones are gonna be more on the more expensive side. I think they're in the like $350 range. Uh, but if you wanna check out these microphones, it's gonna be really option. So let's get this on the camera and let's check this one out now. Okay, so now we are on the brand new Sony shotgun microphone. I am in the ultra setting, so it's going to be right in front of the camera and you're gonna reduce a lot of the background noise, especially even if I throw on the noise cancellation. Let's turn that on. 
So this is the benefit of this microphone other than all of the other microphones except for the ECM B1M because that has it too. But you have noise cancellation on this one. So if you want to remove even more of the background noise, you can do that on this mic and not have to do it in post. So that's a really cool thing as well. Like I said before, it has all the front facing, rear facing. I can switch it to rear facing and front facing just so you can hear Paul. So now we switch it to the front and rear facing microphone. Uh, Paul, tell us where we can find you on like Twitter and stuff. At Paul Feinberg. So you can clearly hear back and forth between me and Paul. So a lot of people who are content creators are doing things like travel vlogs or going to like going to places like Disney where you are behind the camera and in front of the camera and you want to be able to have that option to talk in front of the camera and behind the camera because let's face it it sucks to have to yell from behind the camera so that it picks up on a regular shotgun mic. So this is where this microphone is really going to shine the most and why I would highly recommend it for like content creators especially if you're like couples that do travel vlogs and things like that. Uh, plus the fact is, this is the smallest platform microphone. It is the most compact. And once again, you put it on top of the camera, you put it in that auto mode and you're done. That's it. You don't have to worry if you set your audio levels correct. You just, you put it in and it's good to go. I'm not 100% sure how good this windscreen is because it hasn't really been that windy out when we've been using this microphone. Uh, but Sony did tell me that this windscreen is supposed to be better than the ECM B1M, which does a decent job of reflecting wind, but if it's in high winds, it will still pick up on that microphone. So anyways, this is the Sony shotgun microphone. This is what this microphone sounds like. If you want to hear more about this microphone and how well it does at reducing like crowd noises and stuff, we did take this microphone to Universal Studios to really push its limits to see how well you could isolate crowd noises. Uh, I do have a video on that. Check that one out up here. But anyways, you guys, that's pretty much the mics that I would recommend. Uh, if you guys are looking at like a wireless setup, uh, I'm just gonna save you the trouble right now. Go check out the DJI wireless system. That is still my favorite for multiple reasons. Uh, if you do wanna check out a video on that too, I will have that up right here as well. All right, so now you've heard all the different microphones on the Sony zv one and I did tell you at the end of the video, I was gonna tell you which one I think is my favorite for this camera. Uh, and quite honestly, it is slightly a loaded question because there's a big difference between like a $70 microphone and a $350 microphone as far as price is concerned. So if you take the price point out of the equation altogether and it, just my personal absolute favorite microphone for this, I really have to say it's that brand new Sony Shaka microphone. And it's mostly just because it has all these really cool settings that make it really easy to control exactly where you want the microphone to be facing. Uh, has all the cool different isolation modes. It makes it really easy for being a content creator who especially might work with more than one person at a time, kind of vlogging. But also my biggest thing with that microphone, and this also includes the ECM B1M, is the fact that you can just plug it in on top and that's it. You put it into auto. You don't have to set your volume settings. It just works. Uh, you can definitely set which obviously direction you want or if you want noise cancellation, but when you put it in auto, it's the last thing you have to think about is, is the audio level the correct level on the camera? Versus every other one of these microphones, you have to make sure that the microphone has the right volume if it has the dial on the back. And then you definitely have to set the camera itself to make sure that that thing is coming in kind of at that like negative 12 dB range so that you leave space for headroom. But that Sony microphone, all you have to do is plug it in on top and that's it, it works. I love that feature. As far as the best sound quality, I still kind of have to come back to that Rode VideoMic NTG, but it's a really close comparison to that new Sony microphone. Um, they both have that really good low end, good mid range. That Sony microphone though still takes the edge for me though because it puts it to a right at the right level that I want. It kind of has like built in compression so that it never gets too loud, it doesn't peak, it doesn't clip. And that's why I think that Sony microphone is gonna be the best microphone that I would put on my camera. Now as far as that like mid price point or low price point, I definitely gotta give it to the Rode Go 2. I think you're getting a lot of mic for your money on that. Uh, that microphone does sound very similar I think to the Rode VideoMic NTG but it's like a third the cost. Uh, and it also still allows you to have that USB microphone. So if you are plugging into your computer, doing like live streams or podcasts, things like that, that microphone is perfect for that. Now, if you're not ever gonna do that at all, then yes, that Rode Video Micro, that new version, sounds awesome. Uh, I was actually very surprised how good that microphone sounds for a $70 microphone. In fact, I think it's definitely an improvement over the previous generation of that microphone. But I would also like to know what you guys think you like is the best microphone. So if you want to leave a comment down below on which you think is the best microphone that we tested here today, absolutely put that down there. We'll start a conversation. Uh, if this video has been a help to you at all, please hit that like button. If you guys want to follow more content like this one and other content for the Sony ZV-E1, I'm going to be putting up lots of videos on that. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications to follow along when I put out those videos. And as always guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.